Hey there, friends and viewers. This is Hengist with TGN. Welcome to a little replay action here with uh, Nidalee, my best and favorite. Well, I don't know if she's my... Eh, she's still my favorite champion. But certainly the champion that I play the most and that I consider myself the best with. Not, like, best in the world or anything, but she's the champion in which I excel the most at. Uh, just because I play her so much, and she really suits my personality style. Uh, this is a duo queue. That's something I really don't do very often. Before I talk about that, though, I do want to draw your attention. I placed a trap here uh, before minions spawned. One at rays, one at blue, and two on the lane, the river, to check for level 1 jungle ganks and such. This is a strategy that I picked up recently. It took me a while to kind of realize this was a, a good strategy. Basically, you take your W at level 1. And you go out there and you place down four traps, leashing for your jungle or placing them for, you know, ghetto wards uh, before the game actually begins. And then you TP back to rejuvenate your mana, wait for your 35 gold so you can buy a fourth pot, and then head on out. Um, if you get unlucky, you might miss one minion hit. Uh, it, it really just depends on the RNG. These minions really have kind of a wonky RNG system. But for the, I'd say, probably. Seven or eight times out of ten, you don't miss any minion hits. You see, I kind of got luck unlucky this time, and I did, in fact, miss out on the experience of one minion. Uh, but I accidentally, or by chance, took the big wraith. That was kind of a huge blunder on my part. The trap took the big wraith. I didn't anticipate that from a Maokai jungle placing down three saplings that just explodes. Uh, also, yet again, some RNG. Not working out in my favor, but as you as you can see, I'm doing some mid lane Nidalee action. This is how I started out playing Nidalee, uh, and I started out playing her AP as well. I started playing Nidalee before they nerfed the Primal Surge. That's her heal. Uh, she used to be considered kind of a pseudo support or even a full support um, with Primal Surge because it was, if I'm not mistaken, the strongest heal in the game. Definitely stronger than Soraka's. So yeah, it would be the strongest in the game. Uh, and then they nerfed that because they wanted her to be more of an aggressive champion. And I really enjoyed the changes that they made. Uh, but ever since then, people kind of strayed away from AP Nidalee. Um, just because they were so used to having that heal. Uh, and there are a lot of really strong mid lane champions these days, like Ari, for example. But uh, I, I personally feel like AP Nidalee is still stronger than AD Nidalee or Bruiser Nid. Um, simply because it has a higher skill cap. And, and that you know is dependent entirely on your javelins, your Qs. Uh, probably the highest damage dealing skill shot in the game. People love to complain about it being OP and all that. <laughs> it's just, it, it's really hard. It's one of the hardest skill shots to use because of the range. And also the unit detection, the, the collision detection of it. It's a very small hitbox. Um, but mastering it and, and applying it to team fights, really, uh, AD Nid can't match the damage output. The only reason you would play AD Nid in that situation would be for lane phase. She's probably the strongest pusher, or definitely one of them. Um, and she's a lot tankier, so she can kind of initiate. I would never initiate with in my builds, but she can definitely tank some damage. Uh, I'm playing actually more of a mage build than anything else. It's a very, very offensive build. Uh, a lot of people, when they play AP, they, they like to grab an ROA um, or maybe tier 2 boots early. You know, Ninja Tabby or Merc Tread's pretty quick in. I like to rush my death cap if I land an early kill. If I'm winning lane... I just want to go straight for death cap. And that's because of the, the type of player I am. I love to nuke people, and I love getting kills, and I love to roam after level 6. If you're a Nidalee player, uh, and you don't roam after 6, you're not doing something right. Now, there is an exception. If you're solo queuing and ranked and all that, uh, and you want to basically carry a match, then you do want to you know push top lane as AD Nid for days, and basically carry top lane and get fed that way. Um, but if you're playing with a team, that's not really how I like to do it. I like to roam and I like to get kills. That's my preference. I've, I find myself being quite successful with that strategy. Uh, and that's, you know, that's very potent in my opinion. There's all kinds of killing going on here. We're not going to focus on any of that though, because we're, we're focusing on this match here uh, with me as Nidalee. This is one of the better Nid matches that I've played. So I wanted to cast it for you guys. It's kind of a bland or uh, kind of a plain video you're going to notice it's not spectator mode this will probably be the last replay i cast that is not in spectator mode um, for more reasons than i care to list here but yeah pretty basic video i just wanted to showcase this match because i'm pretty proud of it it's been a while since i've made a, a nid video i do want to talk a little bit about ap nidalee uh in the modern meta um 
and just have a good time with with some of the kills I get in this video. So as I was saying, uh, level six, you do want to roam around a lot. Now, I'm kind of experimenting with, um, I don't know how to say this. I, I think there's room in the meta for a new kind of hybrid role. And that is uh, like a roaming kind of role. And obviously, we have a lot of champions that are very strong junglers. Um, but after level six, primarily, or perhaps a little bit towards closer to the mid game, uh, some champions are far better at roaming than junglers are. Now, typically, you would you would consider a champion with crowd control or gap close to be a good ganker or a good roamer. Nidalee, in my opinion, is the strongest jungle fighter in the game. The reason being is her passive. It's called Prowl. It gives her 15% movement speed bonus when she runs in bushes. So you can utilize that everywhere in the jungle. And you can jump over most walls. Pounce is only a four second, well, less than 4 second cooldown by default. Actually, I think I'm using CDR runes here, so maybe it's about 4 seconds by default. Either way, you can jump around like crazy and evade all kinds of damage. Making Nidalee with her javelins, AP Nid primarily, probably my favorite roamer in the game. So what I'm kind of getting at is I'm, I'm testing out these strategies where I kind of take over the jungle after level 6 uh, with my team. And basically you still have the smite control from your from your jungler, but Nidalee is doing the ganking. Kind of the jungler would take your lane. Um, I think there's a lot of potential in that strategy. I want to I wanna experiment with it to the fullest. But certainly it's not for every champion. It's very specific and player specific as well. If you're a good killer, then you definitely want to be roaming a lot. But me, I prefer to play AP over AD. Simply because, like I said, it does take more skill. And I do think at the skill cap, um, which is pretty much impossible to achieve with skill shots in this game and latency and all that. But at the skill cap, AP Nidalee is far more valuable. You just can't dispute that um, because of her heal in teamfight situation. Uh, AD Nidalee does have better sustain uh, with lifesteal. But if you're getting blues... Uh, your blue and Nidalee's very good at stealing enemy buffs as well, then you really can't contest AP Nid sustain either. So I'm a huge fanboy for AP Nid, although I do like to play AD as well. I'm just not as good as it, at it, and I don't think it has as high a skill cap or as high a potential. As you're going to see, that unfold a little bit here. Uh, once I start roaming around a little bit, I did hit level 7. Wow, double kill down bot. Normally I would be roaming at this point, but my team's ahead already, kind of. I don't know, pretty even right now, actually. I've still yet to land a kill on Galio. Galio's kind of an ass to lane against if you're a mage. Because his passive makes him, you know, have very high MR. Uh, and it's, he's just very tanky by nature. It's it's difficult to to kill him in lane. Um, he's a great counter pick for a lot of scary mage champions. But it looks like he's going up top. I spot this really quickly. And at this point, he should really turn around. Uh, he can't outrun me. He needs to think of something here. He needs to either turn and face me or try to escape in some way, but he decides that he's going to try to outrun me. And that's just not going to happen. You know, you saw him try to counter flash me there, but I'm going to catch him every time he goes through a bush or any time there's kind of a runaway here because my pounce gives me that bonus movement speed that's kind of incalculable. And I'm going to try to land this double off of Singe, but he's pretty tanky. He's going in the tower. I don't really want to chance that. But I'm going to stick around a little bit um, and try to get a kill on him, but I do need to be kind of cautious. Uh, there's a couple Mias that I'm playing kind of ballsy here, but I got Maokai and Jax nearby, so I'm not really too concerned. And there we go. We're going to run in and actually get the last kill there with an auto attack. That's pretty uncommon. Uh, Olaf comes and snags the kill on Maokai, and Jax is forced to flash out of there. At that point right there when, when Olaf kind of paused, that's hesitation. That's the point he realized that he was going to die to me. And he didn't know whether he was going to try and turn and deal maximum damage to me or pursue the kill on Jax. And he wasted about a second's time, which really caused him to not get anything done at all. So, uh, <laughs> unfortunate for the Olaf player. And also great team play uh, from our team up top. But either way, that's my third kill. Killing spree in really one, one movement, one play. And that's going to put me way ahead. I just picked up my Nidalee Lard Rod and my uh, uh, excuse me, Blasting Wand. Almost completed. Well, say maybe five minutes I'll have a death cap if I'm on top of my farm. And that's very, very scary at this point. Now, I don't really play dual queues at all. I kind of mentioned that in the beginning of the video. But the reason is, I guess I'm kind of spoiled. Ever since I started playing League of Legends, I've always played with friends. And so it's kind of um, 
I don't know, maybe some of the traumatic experiences I've had. <laughs> it's kind of a, a harsh word, but it's true. I mean, I really don't enjoy solo queues. Uh, and I feel like it, you don't really become a better player by doing that. So I actually prefer to play against bots when my friends aren't on and I can't practice with friends and viewers or any of that. People I don't know how they play, you know. I prefer to play with bots and just practice new builds and new champions because I feel like I improve more that way than I do in solo queue. I really, this is a team game and I don't believe that investing a lot of time into solo queue is fun for me or, or is it really going to make you a better player. It teaches you bad habits in my opinion. But anyways, um, when you are solo or dual queuing, when you get fed like this, it's basically your responsibility to roam and turn a tide of the game indefinitely. Because you have the power, because the teams are not coordinated to the point where one player roaming around uh, landing a kill or two will change the outcome of a lane and pretty much guarantee the win. If you get a killing spree like I did early, you know, before the 10 minute mark, and you're not roaming, you're doing something wrong. That's not playing properly in terms of solo or duo queue. And that's something you need to change if you want to, you know, be successful. I mean, I'm not really the player to lecture because I don't play League of Legends as much as I would like, although I, I want to start. Um, and I don't really have extensive experience in ranked play, but that's my experience with it. It's really just advice. But yeah, in my opinion, if you're getting fed in solo queue, you have to be roaming because it's your responsibility, your AP or AD carry, and that's what you're supposed to do. And because the teams are not coordinated, they're not pre mains or anything like that, it's so easy to go around and land kills. So that's why you see me not even laning. You know, I, don't, I don't really agree with Galio's strategy of roaming right now. He needs to farm up. Um, but yeah, this is, this is what I should be doing, roaming around in the jungle and winning these lanes here. As you can see, enemy team quite sloppy. So is ours, actually. But uh, having Keisha here as my dual kill partner, roaming around, Maokai, a very strong combo with the root from her from his W combined with the javelin. Mm. Ah, shrouded spear on Olaf in the bush. And look at this Ash, 3v1. Oh, no. I actually forgot about that triple. Wow. Now I'm super fed. 6-0-3 oh, at this point. I need to go back and get my death cap. I'm probably going to grab up this farm first but i don't know i've i've had better plays and it i kind of i don't look down upon but i kind of i don't appreciate uh stalwart you know killing sprees and, and triple kills against uncoordinated teams uncoordinated teams as much as i do against premades but i think i'm playing pretty well at this point i'm feeling really confident and i just want to roam around not even worry about my lane and kind of just have fun with this game there's not really a, any way i can lose um because i'm with AP and Nidalee, I mean, the defense you can do under towers and such, poking, it's so easy to carry a match as AP Nid. As long as you have enough practice with javelins. At this point, I know I, I know this has pretty much sealed the deal. It's probably going to be a 20-minute surrender. So I just want to have as much fun with it as I can. So I rush my 13-minute my death cap there. <laughs> and now we're going to start to see some fun stuff unfold because of those max range javelins. I always, <laughs> I've been playing with Big C a lot more recently, and he's kind of new to the game, so he sees these javelins, he's like, oh my god, it's so overpowered, he just, it takes away everybody's HP. He doesn't understand, you know, the MR and all that, and being fed, <laughs> it's just hilarious. But it really is one of the hardest hitting abilities in the game. Uh, you know, executes like Darius's ult or Garen's ult, or, you know, some other similar abilities, um, they deal a ton of damage. But it scales with some mechanic like missing HP or something. The the mechanic that the Javelin scales with, the distance, is so unique. It's the only ability in the game that scales with, with range. Um, and that's, I think, what makes it so fun to use and so unpredictable as well. You know, if you're seeing Javelins flying out of the jungle, and Nidalee's, that's why I said I want to experiment with, you know, like a new meta roaming role. Because... Javelins coming out of the out of the jungle through walls on Nidalee can totally turn a tide of a match. If you just land one or two javelins in a lane, that's a huge amount. Of, you know, you're forcing somebody back at that point. Um, and so that's why I love this champion so much. And no matter how much I play her, I'll probably never hit the skill cap. Uh, that's a pretty nice shot on Singe there. And, you know, I've watched really strong players. Some of you may know that... Uh, CLG's substitute, X Hazard, from uh, the last MLG tournament, played in, in our, our League of Legends tournament too. You know, I've seen the best Nidalee players in the world, and you know, I I, I like I like to think I can compare to them. Um, that's kind of a boastful statement, but yeah, I, I am I'm pretty damn good at this champion, 
and I can see myself like never hitting the skill cap on her. And that's the beauty of League of Legends. That's why I love this game so much and why it's so popular is because it's always changing. It's ever changing. The dynamics between, you know, collaborating with other champions and also versing other champions are constantly changing. You always have to adapt the champion every patch. And, and, and there's always new builds, new theory crafts to be done. And League of Legends is just, oh, it's going to be the new soccer of esports. It's already more popular than StarCraft 2. Kind of getting off pace here. Kind of just rambling about stuff. We just saw... Uh, Amumu get shut down. Looks like there's a lot of players on the right flank. Well, never mind. Sinja's up top. I'm going to be doing a little bit of roaming around. Probably should take this dragon right here, but I do want to land a kill on Ash because I'm greedy. Looks like Olaf's going to go down to a tower. That Renekton's pretty fed as well. Look at that. Miscalculating the step of the Ash. I was expecting her to head in the other direction. Maybe that was an intentional dodge. I kind of doubt it though. She's trying to juke me up a little bit. Doing a pretty fair job of it actually. But I'm just way too fed. Look at how much damage I'm dealing at this point. Out of control. Unstoppable Nidalee. AD Nidalee cannot deal this much damage. Funny I should mention, you know, Darius and Garen's ultimate. Because Nidalee's uh, cat Q, the takedown, is a very similar mechanic. Uh, it deals more damage depending on how much HP the enemy is missing. And it scales with attack damage. So AD Nid can hit super hard with takedown. Um, but not as hard as these javelins are hitting right now. And that's what I love so much about the Mage Nid, is because the damage is not only unpredictable, but it's also skill-based, and uh, it's just it's some of the best bursts in the game. Max range javelin, flash in out of the jungle and cat, and do a wombo combo. It's pretty much a dead champion at that point. Oh, look at this. All kinds of ultis going down. Uh, these guys aren't even worth much gold. Here's the part where I miscalculate. I was expecting Amumu to tantrum right there, but he missed with the bandage toss. Actually, he did tantrum after I died. Uh, but I, I wasn't expecting him to... I was... <laughs> How do I say this? I expected him to do more in that fight. Uh, that was a miscalculation on my part. I did go down there. That was a very ballsy play. I could have kept kiting that Olaf to no end, but I wanted to turn around and surprise him with some of that Amumu damage. But he did miss his bandage toss, and I died. Unfortunate. Um, <laughs> just fed that guy 600 gold on a 12-man killing spree. But, uh, yeah. That's a death. You're going to notice I picked up Ninja Tabbies. That's because they didn't have a proper uh, AP mid. They had Galio mid. And, yeah, he deals damage. Significant burst, especially in the earlier game. With his with his Whirlwind... Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know the name of his Q... Maybe it's not as cute. I haven't played Galio forever, but yeah. Galio has significant magic burst, but it's not enough for me to consider, you know, <laughs> getting MR. I mean, this singed not really a threat to me either. So Ninja Tabby, in my opinion, was the best way to go um, because of Ash. He's really the only one that I'm concerned about. Olaf can't really chase Nidalee. I'm going up top here trying to trying to get a kill on uh, Singe, but I don't know what happened to him. He's just super fast, I suppose. He must have just barely got through the shroud before I got there. But as I said, this is going to be a 20 minute surrender. There's really no way they could come. Oh, he went through our jungle. That's where he went. There's really no way they could come back with, from this. So I'm kind of just dinking around at this point. I want to get a, a Lich Bane next. I like the Lich Bane because um, I heal a lot, obviously. It's very good for kite and fight. For a very aggressive playstyle. Wow, Maokai getting kind of ballsy there. But also the uh, unpredictable nature of it. If you throw a Javelin and an auto attack and the, the hit hits simultaneously with the Javelin, uh, that could be a, a lot of extra bursts that the enemy won't be expecting. Nidalee's one of those champions where she just she just turns around and kills you, and you're like, what just happened? You know, with a takedown or something. She's very unpredictable. I know I keep saying that. I probably sound like a broken record player. <laughs> but uh, some of you guys who've been watching me play League of Legends, you know, it's been almost a year now. Actually, probably over a year. And I started off pretty newbie. You know, all the Mountain Sages making fun of me all the time. Um, and then I started getting into Nidalee and people started saying, hey, you're pretty good at Nid. And then I kind of started trying to figure out other champions and get good at those ones. Um, and then all you guys are like, why don't you play Nidalee anymore, man? You never play Nidalee. So I figure I kind of owe you guys a Nidalee video. It's been a while. I think probably I haven't really done a, a Nidalee exclusive video since the AD guide. That wasn't, wasn't even very good. Has a lot of views, though. That was a while ago. But I do play in squadrons here and there. I figured I'd show you a nice little AP carry. I mean, the, my enemy opponents are not that great, as you can probably tell. But neither are my allies, actually. So, 
kind of probably sound like an elitist jerk. But it's true. I mean, that's kind of what happens when you when you solo a dual cube. I'd say uh, my nid play is probably to the point where I could start hard carrying uh, solo queue ranked. But I just don't really want to do that. I just I don't really get anything about from from solo queues. I really just prefer to do pre mates I guess I kind of have that tournament mentality. But enough about that. We just saw Renish can go down here. He's super fed, so something happened. Just caught sight of that Olaf in his shroud with a trap placement and shot him. Galio steps on the trap just in range of a swipe takedown. There's the double. There were five players down here. I caught sight of Leona. We see a W from Maokai. A little hesitant to go in there. There we go. Gonna range myself a little bit and take her down with a Javelin. Sheen combo. That's the one I was telling you about. Auto attack hits the same time as the Javelin. Deals a devastating amount of damage. Oh, Ash actually pretty good with her jukes in this match. Juking, juking that Javelin. I want to die this one. Foolishly going in before Maokai and taking two tower hits there. Uh, really all I need to do is just land a single Javelin like that. Kaboom. Plenty of damage for me to use a takedown there. Actually, a swipe took her down. Mumu was trying to jack that. Totally unnecessary for him to dive that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's a great example of how AP and AD differs. An AD player would have to, you know, pounce in there in a tower dive in cat form and, and rely on takedown to kill that Ash. Probably wouldn't have, would not have been enough burst damage to kill her in a timely enough manner. However, as AP, landing that distance javelin crazy damage she couldn't have come back from that and that's really the difference there's a big difference between the two and it's really the type of player that you are uh, but i figured i'd show you some mage i hope you guys enjoyed that video it was a 20 minute surrender uh kind of a simple one probably the last regular replay i'll ever show <laughs> thanks for watching i missed you guys and i'll see you next time Bye bye